Bonjour and welcome to On the Other Hoof's ARC video. The Long Shore meeting is climaxing tomorrow, including a whole host of grade ones or group ones, sorry. It's fantastic racing. Saturday's over. We got that out of the way. Now we can settle into the really good racing on Sunday. And to go through the card with me is Callum Adele and Adam Webb. How are you doing, Japs? Good. That attempt at French was absolutely pathetic compared to yeah. what I did last year. Yes. I did a whole intro in French and used one word. At least it was a French word, so... <laughs> Come back when you've tipped six naps in a row. In a row. All right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> if this one loses, does it not count? Because it's not Saturday. Yes, Friday it's not an official anymore. Saturday video. <laughs> Friday video. Yeah, well... well. Oh. Yeah, no, um, well, we were, we were here last night, um, mine and Adam's nap, uh, Michael's nap, sorry, one in uh, Integral, Cal oh god, Callum's nap, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I should just say before, if me and Callum, if me or, or Callum or both of us burst into tears at any point in this show, sometimes what me and Callum do on Saturdays is we put, put a Goliath together, i.e. four horses, and then do a 10p or 15p line, so sort of you could win a lot for not too much of, a, of an outlay. And we had, at one point, four out of five winners, so going on to the last five. And Bet365 offered us a cash out of a lot, around <laughs> around eight. I think I was £866. And we thought, no, we'll let Felwar run. We'll let Felwar run. And she did not win. And then it went down a bit, and then we went on to firefighting. And it got denied <laughs> by about that much at six to one. And yeah, it, 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 the last one won. The last one won, which saved the blushes, but it could have been so much better. It so, could have. But we live and learn, um, and we're looking forward to, to the card at Longshore Tomorrow. Yeah. You guys yeah. looking forward to anything particular or? No, just a a really open arc and some really good support races. Um, I've been informed that last year, the way we did this was um, we left the arc until last. So that's what we're going to do and leave you guys in anticipation. I wasn't here last year because my brother chose Arc Day to get married in Canada, which we is highly inconsiderate of it. And we, we cleaned yeah, it. And, yeah, and... Yeah. I mean, we got a few on... plates. No. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Um, yeah, well, we might have done, you know. No. Uh, we'll get straight into the action. The Abbey is up first over uh, four furlongs, 213 yards, and it's a competitive as always. Very, very high class. Soul Power is a short price favourite this. The rain hasn't come as of yet, so Soul Power, Callum, has to be in with a massive chance. I cannot see him beat whatsoever in this race, and I, I, that's quite a bold statement to make, but I, I really can't. The race is just perfectly set up for him. He needs a strongly run or viciously run five furlongs and he, without doubt he's going to get it tomorrow. I mean, you look at the amount of pace that's on here. You've got horses such as Hamza, Stepper Point, Mirza, Take Cover, Hot Streak, Justinio, Sir Maximilian, Kotai Glory and Gokun. They all want a front run and I think it's just going to be an absolute speed test and I, I don't see why Soul Power won't just pick them up and, and win really comfortably to be honest. With Richard Hughes on board, he's, he's an improved uh, improved horse. He's just taken his, his form to that extra level this season, and he's done nothing wrong in the in the Abbey before. He's not won it, but he was third in 2011, uh, fifth uh, in 2012 on heavy ground, and sixth in 2013 on soft ground. So finally, he's got his ground, and he's at this sort of level. I just don't see him beat at all, and I think five to two is actually a, a very good price in him. I think he should be. Yeah. Six to four in this, without doubt. I know it's a bit of a, a lottery and a bit of a lucky race, but if he's if anything's going to get into trouble and you would bank on Soul Power getting out of it, he did it at York. I don't see why he can't do it tomorrow. Well, the draw's been fairly kind to him. It's, it's not the best he could have had. It's not the worst, but I suppose coming out of stall eleven, it'd be fairly easy for Richard Hughes to get some kind of cover. Yeah, I I agree. I, I just. I, I'm not. I think the draw's absolutely fine, to be honest. I mean, he's a hold-up performer. The only worry I would have if you if you had a, a horse that wants the front run that has a wide draw. Um, bar him, though, if you wanted to find a, a, a better each way price, I think Rangali might run quite quite well. He's a horse I rate a uh, three-year-old. He maybe just needs a bit more time, but his none thought run w was was a lot with with a lot of promise, and he just seemed to to want to go a yard quicker than everything else because it wasn't a particularly strongly run race that. Uh, whereas tomorrow I think will it'll, it'll settle right up for him, and uh, I think he'll he'll run nicely around sixteen to one. 
Yeah, I couldn't put you off Rangel at all. Um, I completely agree with Soul Power. It really is his race to lose tomorrow. Um, I can't add anything else onto what you've uh, already said about him and what everyone else knows about him. Um, at a price, horse I'd look at. I was really keen on Cat Call, but the draw has not been kind to him at all. He's got 19 of 19, so right out on the wide outside. Hopefully, Olivier Pellier managed to get him in behind horses and hopefully take the same sort of route as Soul Power, whether he's good enough to go with. Obviously, he was second in the race last year. However, but I don't know. The draw really does put you off. Around 14 to 1, though. He's the kind of horse that could run into a place, and it wouldn't surprise you, especially with such a, a strong pace promised. Um, I was keen on Kotai Glory. Again, the draw hasn't been kind to him, especially for his front-running tactics and so many other front-runners in the field. He might struggle tomorrow, especially a two-year-old taking on this, uh, this kind of field so early in their career. It may just come a bit too soon. Um, as for the rest, I, I'm not 100% sure. I'm a fan of Hamza. If Hamza can get to the front, maybe... Uh, stamina could prevail and he, he might be able to last out a bit in front but uh, I'm completely with Soul Power and, and definitely with Callum tomorrow. Um, is it a clean sweep for Soul Power Adam? Yeah it is. The thing is as well about Soul Power is that he has run in this race several times before and has not had his conditions yet in all of those attempts he has ran well in the race. He's finally got his conditions. The only way I can see him losing this tomorrow is if Richard Hughes is flashy and when I say flashy I mean he's basically taking the pull, taking the pull, taking the pull Goes at the last possible moment, looking like he's a really unlucky uh, loser. But I just think tomorrow, if he if he gets the gaps, I think he wins. Uh, the problem with this race for me is the fact that the horses that I liked in the race are all drawn in the car park, if, effectively. It's like, I did like Kotai Glory, but I think from 16 he's got a, a hell of a task. Cat Call was another who's drawn in 19, but then you look at the horses drawn low, and none of them really inspire me, if I'm quite honest. Um... Just interesting to note with the Qatar horses, I'm surprised that um, Jamie Spence has chosen um, Pearl Secret. The race could even be set up for him to run a big race at a huge price, but I think he wants six, as I've said many times on these videos. And he actually wasn't disgraced in the Sprint Cup, so Soul Power's my likely winner, and I, I couldn't put one up at an each race prize, if I'm being honest. Do you remember, Adam, mm. when Richard Hughes first rode Soul Power? And we had a yeah. debate... <laughs> and you said that Hughes I wouldn't suit him. Made about, I didn't say he wouldn't suit him. I just said that Soul Power was a horse that needs knowing. And yeah, I agreed. I agreed with you. I did agree with you at the time. I was, was really very wrong. <laughs> 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 I think I was the only one that sat here thinking, I'm, I think Richard Hughes is the perfect jockey. He is. Yeah, yeah but the, the thing is, though, I, I just said that he was a horse that needs knowing because Ryan Moore don't think we're in first time out either. So... Is sort of he needs to be known, and Richard Hughes has shown him perfectly at Ascot at York a question to ride. But apart from that, it's been a good year, and I mean over six in the Sprint Cup on rain softened ground. He still ran well, but I just think this year finally gets his ground in the Abbey, and I think he should win. So. In so fairness, you, your your logic was very sound in it. In fairness, like, I couldn't fault that whatsoever. It just, Richard Hughes does seem to be perfectly suited for soul power. One of the rare uh, times you have not doubted my logic, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take it as they come. Uh, next up is the pre-Marcel Boussac, a Phillies Group 1 of 7,209 yards. Um, a fairly strong sort of English and Irish contingent here. Jack Naylor probably heads them along with Found. Um, it's a difficult race to, to sort of summarise and get through in the nitty gritty so what way are you heading Adam? I'm looking at the form of the Moigler and the Moigler form is just standing up already I mean the second Lucy just came out and won the fifth the Sailor came out and won today um, I think Malabar is actually overpriced here I think the step up to Mar will suit her and I thought she was really impressive at Goodwood as well the time before I think at the prices, I'd rather be on her than found, uh, but I do respect found quite a lot. Uh, just a, a little note for going to Callum. You remember you asked before the video started that no, about No Name Never? Well, he's won without coming off the bridle, so... What, tonight? Yeah, he's, he's won. Or didn't come off the bridle, so... Yeah. Yeah, Malabar is uh, the one for me in this. Yeah, uh, I completely agree with you on Malabar. I watched the Moigler back a bit earlier on, and I don't get why there's such a big discrepancy between 7-1 to one of Malabar and 5-2 to two of Found. Malabar, I was watching it, and the amount of knocks she took, she got absolutely battered on more than, I think I counted three or four occasions. 
Then she still came through on the outside, staying on really nicely. And sort of an extra half a furlong, she'd have definitely been third, maybe second, challenging cursory glass for first position anyway. So seven to one about Malabar, who, who at Ascot broke the track record as well. That has to be taken into account. I just think it's a huge price. So unlucky last time out, probably wouldn't have won. But better than four, the finishing place of fourth uh, th- uh, suggests. And with a horse like Found that's five to two favourite, I'd I'd much rather the seven to one about Malabar. Of the rest, I, I I don't know. I couldn't really get too excited about them. But Malabar, I'm really quite keen on tomorrow. Um, and I know you're a fan of Malabar, Callum. But are you tomorrow? Yeah, I'm gonna make it a clean sweep here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I I just totally agree. I think there's a, a a bizarre price discrepancy between her and Found. And I know Found is a really potentially a really nice horse, and she will appreciate the mile more than she appreciated seven. And she was very green on that race, but Malabar was gaining on her at the line and ran a similarly good race, has similar amount of ability judged on it so far, and yet it's double the price. I just think it's, well, over double the price. I think it's absolute madness. And um, it's simply a value bet. I, I think Fan's got a great chance, and I think uh, the other two fillies that separate them in the market, the uh, French filly Everdea, who should appreciate this test a lot more than the six last time and uh, in the morning behind the wow signal, and that, that is strong form. Um, I, I think she'll stay well. She says should stay well on pedigree. And Jack Naylor, who's a weird name for a filly, but uh, she she stayed pretty well. The form form is, is solid enough. Beat Agnes Stewart over seven. That horse has gone to win uh, at Doncaster in a Group Two, and uh, and the car race she beat solid horses as well. So she's respected. But Malabar, I just think is way too big to be honest at eight to one. So she has yeah. to be the bet in the race. Yeah, I think. Uh, Jack Nail is going to need a really strong pace tomorrow to aim at. I sort of got the feel that she wanted a little bit further last time out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, she's, just, she's, just, she's, just, she's workmanlike, whereas quite a few of these others maybe just have a little bit more class than her. Potentially. Yeah. This is going to get very repetitive. Uh-oh. We all agreed on soul power. <laughs> we all agreed on Malabar. Oh, no. Next up is the Qatar Prix oh, Jean-Luc Lagardère. A group one, <laughs> six furlongs and 211 yards. I, I would ask what we fancy. I think it's probably a better question to ask anyone, how far does the wow signal win by? Because <laughs> 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 I, 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 I'm right in saying we're all on the wow signal, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll um, give you one at an each way price, though. There is one at an each way price I do like. Uh, we'll get the wow signal out of the way first. Who, which of you wants to take it? Oh, I'll go first this time. Um, yeah, the wow signal done absolutely nothing wrong in three starts so far. Looked a little bit more laboured last time at Dofield. Maybe just got a, a touch out pace, but stuck on really well. And the extra furlong should be right up his street tomorrow. Um, it just looks like the horse hasn't really got the credit that he deserves. If, if he was trained by a more fashionable trainer, I think without doubt he'd be shorter in this. And his form, for me, looks a lot stronger than the Glen Eagles form. Uh, Glen Eagles has done nothing wrong so far and, and, and has won his last four. But this just looks a, a, a much better race. Uh, you know, This is going to be his biggest test so far. And I think the wow signal at this stage has, sh- has shown better form. I think the French horse's full mass is, is well worth a go in this. I was impressed last time at Longchamp where he just basically kicks on from the front but looks well in charge and beat a horse that was uh, before that unbeaten in Nusa Ferro, who also runs here again. I can see him confirming that form, it's just whether he gets his own way out in front again. But he seems to have gears and is well worth a chance in this race. But um, the wow signal, I, I can't see past. A two to one, I think, is fair. Very, very fair. Um, so I probably won't have a bet in it. I might have a double with Soul Power. I think you yeah. will, Luke. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think I think he will win tomorrow. No reason at all. I can't can't see why he won't win tomorrow. Yeah, it's, I completely agree. Last time out, got I agree with you. That he got a bit of pace, and the extra furlong is one of the main reasons I'm so bullish on him. I think he'll probably get a mile in time next year. A guinea horse is definitely something I describe or be willing to describe him as now. The thing that really sort of swayed me is the Wow Signal is a much more flashy and exuberant horse and does things in a much more spectacular way than Glen Eagles does. Glen Eagles just does enough. He didn't win the national stakes last time with sort of much authority. He just did enough in front. It wasn't a strong race by any stretch of the imagination. Toscanini is a nice horse that finished second, but coming to this race, he would be sort of an each way chance. 
However, with the wow signal, he seems to do everything very, very impressively. And tomorrow, I really can't see past him at all. Two to one, I think, is a huge price. I'd much rather him over Glen Eagles. Um, I think I'd just leave it there as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put up anything each way, really. Um, but I, I just can't see the wow signal beaten at all. And I assume we've taken all the points that Adam was going to mention as well. I've got one or two extra points that I'll make. Oh, yeah. Uh, Royal Ascot, his win was even more impressive at the fact that he came from storm number one, and as we saw later in the week, you had to be drawn on that near side, near enough on the near side road. So for him to win from storm one and make and make his own running, I thought that was a huge performance. Uh, Deauville is is outpaced, but the problem with that race for me, well, not really a problem, but the ground was just so bad that day. And I thought he did really well that day. I was, even though he won his debut on soft ground, I was really worried about him at Deauville because, as we'd seen the week before when Kingman won, the ground was just dreadful. So I was really impressed with him to win there. Uh, he's not doing the one that I actually quite liked at a price was Territories. Um, he was third to four mass last time out, and he wasn't beaten that far. Um, I thought he got going a bit too late that day. I don't think he reversed form with four mass, but he could easily run into a place. And one other little note, Axe Bante, who won the Solario, is in first time blinkers with William Buick booked. And that looks interesting that they've put blinkers on. So, yeah, the wow signal should win. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen not Tony Amato tweeting in a question about the jumps. <laughs> oh, my word. What, what, what <laughs> Leave it. It was directed to Callum, so. <laughs> <laughs> Great Bante, it really is. Well, in fact, it's about a Longston horse, so... <laughs> oh, fair enough, yeah. It's about side from Matty, so... Um, the, the next, the 255 at Longston, is the uh, Prix de l'Opera. Uh, Phillies Group 1 run over a mile, one furlong, and 207 yards, effectively a mile, two. It's not the strongest of races, if Bruce be told. The fact that Ribbons is 11 to 2 won nicely in the uh, Group 1 last time out, again, that wasn't really that strong a race, so maybe a bit flattered by that. Your market leader is Tarfasha, and surely, Adam, Tarfasha's got to bring the strongest form to the plate here. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, she was third, uh, she was second, I beg your pardon, to Zagruda in the um, Epps mode. She disappointed in the Irish Oaks. She came back to a mile and a quarter last time out and won nicely at the Curra. And Connection said after that that a mile and a quarter was her trip and they would be looking for races like the Opera, maybe even go over the Breeders' Cup for the uh, yeah. I think she's a likely winner here. One at a bigger price, and I'm only mentioning this because of the fact her stable mate runs in the arc and she's my main fancy, but I'd like to see Chris Oles run well at a bigger price because if she runs well, then that means um, hopefully then for having a third time that she can, uh, <laughs> the form will have a boost. Interestingly, she was... Um, bought by a new owner last night, um, tonight even, for quite a big sum of money, so I hope she can run well, but I think Tarfasha for me is the one to beat. The only slight concern I'd have is the draw, drawn on the inside, if you, if you can't get out you're in serious trouble around Longchamp, but I really like her tomorrow. Who um who trains uh, Crystal? John claude Rouge. Now let's not talk about that. That's for something <laughs> later on in the video that we will mention. <laughs> Callum doesn't know about this yet. Callum, you will find out about it later on. Um, <laughs> about we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it when we talk about the arc, and I'll, I'll explain what Luke's going on about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inter yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, I can't receive really past Tarfasha tomorrow. This isn't the strongest of races. I said a bit earlier on that Tarfasha brings the strongest form to the plate. That form by Integruda, it may not have been sort of like world class form. She was beaten fairly comprehensively. But back at this kind of trip, last time out, I was quite impressed by her beating Chiquita. The Chiquita obviously runs in the big race in the arc uh, to, well, tomorrow, today, whatever. Um, I just think Tarfasha is the classiest horse in the field. If I did. I do like Sultanina, but she really disappointed last time out, and I'm not. I think she's done her job basically in getting black type, winning her group races, and I think she, sort of the ultimate goal for her is to become a broodmare. So she's done her job for me tomorrow. Anything else is just a bonus. Um, I couldn't really be touching too many others in, in the field. I just think Tarfash is the best horse and brings the best uh, form to the play. So you can't really elaborate too much on it. Um, Adam, you went for Tarfasha as well, didn't you? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Callum, it's uh, down to you, mate. I'm going to break the sequence. Nah. <laughs> um, no, I, I think Tarfasha's got a, a favourite's chance, and 
She st she doesn't stay twelve furlongs. I mean, she just about stayed twelve furlongs in the in the Oaks. She clearly didn't stay twelve at the Curra. Uh, so return to ten furlongs. She's won her last two starts over that trip, and I expect her to go well on ground that she she likes. So I think she's got a good chance. The one I just prefer is the French filly We Are, who hasn't beat well. She wasn't seen for a while. She won the Saint Allery, but she's actually disqualified after that uh, for an abnormal dope test. It was caused by an ovarian cyst, and she had that operated on, uh, so she hadn't been seen for a few months. But she came back a couple of well, a couple of weeks ago in a, in a listed race. Never really got involved in the race. Got outpaced, then ran on and was basically just hands and heels for sixth, beating two two lengths. And it really looks as much as a a, a, a trial as she could possibly get. So I mean, she went off favourite that day, but it really was a trial, and and this seems to be seems to be the aim for for quite a while. So if she runs back to that sort of form that saw her win group, a Group 1 earlier in the season, albeit not the strongest of Group 1s, but she won it like a very good horse, then I think she'll take a lot of beating tomorrow. But there's plenty of good chances. Ribbons, I just cannot work out where she came and, and improved that much to win the Jean Romanet last time out. I'm not sure if this sort of ground will... will she will be preferred because she seems to absolutely love the really soft ground that day. Sultanina prefers 10 furlongs. I'm not sure she particularly stays 12. I thought she ran okay last time uh, in the Vermeer, but uh, I'm just not sure that form winning the Nassau over Narnine is, is particularly strong. And Narnine was beaten a lot further by ribbons in the uh, uh, in the Romanet. And Shamkala's an interesting runner. She's Looks an absolute world beater early in the season, but she's disappointed a little bit. She was she went off eleven to ten in the Dian, and was beaten fourth, beaten uh, a length. Probably last time out wasn't her her bag over twelve and a half on very soft ground. This might be more her, but uh, is pushed pushed over by Christoph Sumion, who goes for uh, for Nani. And so it, it, it's an open race. Lots of fillies that are coming into form and potentially aren't that good, but We Are looks a standout on the form so far if she's back to form, so I'm going to go for her. I think we had a question earlier on about We Are, actually, yeah, asking if um, we thought We Are should be in the arc. Yeah, by Tom Tom Neal. Um, anyone else a little surprised that We Are isn't in the arc? After, no, but... her, after her problems this year, I'd say no. But I think if she stays in training next year, she could easily be an art course. Yeah. If she'd won a return, maybe. Mm. Um, yeah, but she, I mean, she just didn't seem fit that day. She got really badly outpaced and then ran on really smartly at the end. So, um, but this looks this looks a, a wide open Group One, so it's hers for the taking. So, um, it won't look a bad decision if she wins this. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, now, the next race we would be covering would be the ARC, but we're going to save that to the end. And then the next race after that that we'd be covering is the Arab race, but I don't think either of us are, or any of us are Gary Cape. The, the horse that won at Doncaster, there we go. Is that right? <laughs> she, stole, she, stole, she stole a march on them about five lengths and just wasn't for catching. Al Altique, I think she was called, I think. Well, if Gary Cape well, just happens to be watching this by any fluke, then feel free to let us know. But um, the 450 is next. That's the uh, Pre de la Fore over six furlongs, 211 yards, so effectively seven furlongs. It's, this is a very good race, actually. Um, if you're looking on the Sporting Life uh, race cards as well, you'll notice that Danny Tudhope is riding that as a spirit. You'd imagine he'd ride uh, custom cut. However, the up-and-coming Nicolas Parton, uh, <laughs> very good French jockey, is <laughs> riding. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Oh, we lost that uh, over that early, didn't we? None of us could. God. I was Probably doing well. Probably the reason why we were so delayed, we were having the laughing fit over Nicholas Parton. Very good jockey in the provinces, so... <laughs> <laughs> Up and coming, very underrated, Nicola Parton. <laughs> <laughs> Never ridden well, a loser. Custom. Never ridden, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Never ridden exactly. a winner, though, so... <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I particularly liked about that though is that you clicked on it expecting jockey form and you didn't get any, so... It's just like, I have never seen that before. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wasn't, I kind of knew what was up, because Danny Tato would not choose that as a spirit over Custom Cut, but obviously Custom Cut is a non-runner, we're not actually idiots. Um, <laughs> that is a spirit, we, is a horse that we very much like on this show, but it looks up against it tomorrow. It's a wide open race, however. Uh, Caraconti looks to be one of the, the main sort of 
protagonist. Anadin is also in there. Up at the top, you've got the English Raiders at Al Jamahir, Olympic Glory from Ireland. Gordon Lord Byron, Darwin's in there, Garswood's in there. Ansgar won last time out really quite nicely. SK Love, everyone's favourite is in there. It's a really competitive race and full of class. Even Nuzo Canarius is back. Um, Adam, fantastic race. What way are you pointing? It's a strange one because the two that I like, I've got a feeling that neither of them are going to be actually fully wound up. Caraconti was one I liked. Won the French Guineas and then disappointed in the uh, Breeder Jockey Club behind the Grey Gatsby. Um, if he is ready for this, I think he wins. I think he's a very good horse, and I think he would be the one to beat. Anna Ding would have been the other, but I just think that this is a, a, a prep room for America, so or as, as Claude Charlie says, Anna <laughs> Um Of the other main contenders, I can't have Olympic glory. Gordon Moore Byron looked to, um, in a, a gallop the other day, looked to be really impressive, but he and he's ran one of those before. But huh? one thing I was thinking about Gordon Moore Byron, his last run came 22 days ago. Yeah. Was a race course gallop really necessary? Like I'm not. I don't know. Like, I mean, he went to Leopard Town. I'm surprised he even ran at Leopard Town a week after the Sprint Cup. So I don't know. Maybe they want to get him really, really, really fit. I don't know. But it's yeah. just a bit strange. Um. The thing uh, I will say as well, Nuzu Canarius finally gets good ground. I mean, it was good to soft last time, so all the softness will hopefully be out of it, and he could run a big race, but I, I question him now. Before the July Cup, if you told me that he was going to run two shockers, I'd have probably laughed at you after that Guineas run. Uh, but the, the one I will go for, I will go for Caraconti, but it's a slight, I've got my, my slight doubts about him actually being fully wound up for this. Yeah. I hope he's <laughs> Caraconti was the one that I actually quite liked in this as well. I just don't think he fully stayed last time. So back to a distance which seems to be suitable for him, I think could be more than competitive. But as Adam alluded to, a break of 126 days, it is just if he's fit. You'd imagine on a big day and a big stage like this, especially in the foray, he'd yeah. be wound up and ready to go. But it just, yeah, it's you, it's the you don't know until they run kind of thing. You, like they might think he's as fit as anything back. I've never been better, but until he gets to race course, we don't know 100. percent And one that I wanted to put up each way was um, Ansgar, who won really nicely last time out beating Aljam here and Gregorian. Now they're both very good yardsticks in their own right. Aljam here has, has even turned up here. I thought Gregorian might turn up here uh, personally, but apparently not. Um, but Ansgar actually really impressed me out there. I know Callum was a, a fan of it. Uh, him on that day, and I couldn't have had him at all, but travelled really well, quick and nicely, and James Doyle seemed to get on really well with him. Around 12 to 1, I could see him sort of being the type to run into a place, but for win purposes, it'd be, I'd be with Caraconti. I don't know whether I'd have a bet in the race, though. It looks like it could just be a race to sit back, really enjoy and watch it, because it is a really fantastic contest. Um, Callum, you're fancy? I can quite easily oppose quite a few at the head of the markets, certainly Olympic Glory, who I, I think needs a straight track, and I've said this for a long time, I know he's a, a former Lagardère winner, but he's just a horse that never run well at Longchamp since, uh, and, and has not really had many excuses for it either, and I don't think Seven Furlongs is right, and I think ideally he'd want softer ground over this sort of trip. Gordon Lord Byron likewise, I think, wants softer ground. Ran really well in the race last year, though, behind the brilliant Moonlight Cloud when making some strong running. And likewise, I think this race could be quite strongly run with him up front. Horses like Garswood, Ansgar up there, Darwin was ridden prominently of late, SK Love. That is the spirit. It's going to be quite a strongly run race. And oh, Nizukinarius, obviously. So it could be quite a strongly run race. And I think that Doncaster form with Ansgar and Aljamir here is actually pretty strong, and considering it will be a better run race, I think Aljamir here does appeal to me at a, a decent price of 16 to 1. I mean, that was his first run over seven furlongs this season. He's been running over six after experimenting with, with sprinting, so he was a bit keen early on, um, and he gets his ground tomorrow. He does need uh, decent ground, so he gets that, and I think with a, with a decent bit of pace on, I think he's got a great great chance tomorrow and 16 to 1 is a little bit uh, too too high in the market but the two French horses as well I haven't mentioned Anna Dean who I'm a real big fan of this horse but I think this is a prep for the Breeders Cup which will suit him down to the ground and Cara Conti who I'm, I'm not really sure I mean the, the French Colts have been a pretty poor bunch this year and 
but bar Ecto and, and Cara Conti, who are probably the best, but they're not outstanding. Ecto possibly uh, a very much different, but he, he does look at a class act, and I'm sure he'll run well in the in the arc. But Cara Conti down to seven, I think it, it's a strange one. I'm I'm not really keen on him, but it's a good race. But I think Aljamain here is well worth an each way around 16s. That's fair enough. Um, moving on to the second last race we're going to be covering on the card, the Qatar Prix du Cadran. Uh, group 1, over 2 miles, 3 furlongs and 194 yards. It's competitive, but it's probably not the strongest. Our, our good friend um, Nicolas Parton will pick up another spare ride here in the form of Altano, who's a <laughs> non-runner. <laughs> Altano is unfortunately a non-runner, and that was unfortunate because he was my idea of the winner. I uh, know it was Adam's idea of the winner as well, but Adam, you are replacing Artano with... Whitlash, really. Which would be a North Look at 15 horse. I don't know if we're getting a North Look at 15 tonight. Uh, I did a write-up for this race, which will be somewhere after... It'll be on Scott Ferguson's blog, and basically the gist of it is Whitlash, really, is the strongest stayer in the race. I have my doubts about Pale Mimosa for several reasons. I'll let Callum talk more about the race. I'm just going to basically a little run through the blog. Um... But with last release, my idea of the winner, I have my doubts about Pale Mimosa. Um, High Jinx will just plod on. Mm. The interesting one is Fly With Me, but the ground and whether he'll get the French horses, I think he's the most likely to get the trip. You need a really strong stayer, and I'll turn tick that box. And Ash really, really is just straight win on with last really for me. I can't point if he was beaten as well. It's, with Whiplash Willie last time, I just thought that the jockey uh, held on to, for, to him too long. Yeah. And let I Big agree. Orange get away. And Big Orange has, of course, frank the form since. So. Hello, Adam. Is he gone? I think he has apparently. gone. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. And the second he was on camera. Oh, he's there. <laughs> <Is that laughs> there? We haven't had an internet problem for so long. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll go. We'll go on to uh, to other horses in the race. Um, Callum, you're with Whiplash Willie as well, aren't you? Yeah, I'm. I'm quite a fan of this horse. He's had a lot of problems. I mean, he was off for well, three or well, two seasons. He missed uh, oh. with leg problems, and he's come back a really smart horse. <laughs> <laughs> he just came and go, oh. <laughs> so, Whiplash Willie, um, come on, we need to be serious here, guys, come on. Um, yeah, he came, came back, looks as good as ever, and I've been really impressed with him this season. His third to Brown Panther is, is strong form in the Henry II. His second to Big Orange Wage, he got a pretty poor ride, like we've said. Uh, again, he's really strong form. And uh, his, his Doncaster second to estimate, again, I think is is very strong form. He stays all day. Uh, the ground is, is absolutely fine. I mean, when he was um, early, early in his career, he, he did need this sort of ground. He wanted this sort of ground. It's just that he doesn't want really fast summer ground. So tomorrow, I think, will be ideal for him. It is drying out, but it's going to be a proper stamina test, and he'll stay better than the majority of them, whereas the French horses just look quite slow. Um, Batheron won what looked a pretty weak race over K Kiki Blue and uh, Hijinx last time out and uh, Hijinx didn't run particularly well in the race last year when he had his sort of ground he's maybe in slightly better form but mm. I just don't think he's he's good enough the, the class act without doubt is Pell Mimosa she's just a filly I just can't see her staying I, I think she's a massive negative staying I mean they've always had doubts about her staying potentially when uh, she ran at Ascot they held her up last year um, in the uh, long distance cup they held her up because they didn't think she'd get the trip obviously she's shown she stays pretty well she travels really well in her races and she likes good ground but I I think it's a massive uh, question mark those extra four furlongs and you need a stayer a proper thorough stayer and um, the, on the estimate form there's little between Pell Mose and Whiplash Willie anyway and I think Whiplash Willie will, will outstay all of them to be honest so I think I'm quite keen on him, so I think he's got a really good chance. Yeah, I do think it's between the two English horses, actually, with Whiplash Willie. Very easy to make a case for, obviously. But High Jinx is one, when he's in form, is very, very good. When he's not, he's awful. But you go back 
uh, was it two years ago? Uh, he came second in this race, beating and he still beat that day in Inform Color Vision, and uh, completely <laughs> forgot who the uh, last who was in fourth. It was Sadler's Rock, who oh, at his, at, in his day was a, a very good stayer. Now. I think Hijinx is just very slow and will just stay on and stay on and stay on all day, as he's proved in pretty much every race he's he's run in recent times. Like last time out behind, as Callum said, Bathyron, third, plodding on, won at Maison on the feet over sort of probably an inadequate distance, but it was a race that he couldn't really lose. Sandown behind Brown Panther again, plodded on in pretty awful conditions in the uh, was a Henry second uh, Henry the second. I I can just. I couldn't make the strongest case, and I wouldn't be putting huge amounts of money on him, but he could just be a horse that plods on, and I can see him sort of finding himself in front late on in the day, but it depends how David Probert rides Whiplash Woolley. He needs to make quite a bit of him, because I think Whiplash Woolley is just the kind of horse that stays all day, and it'll be testament to Andrew Balding, because Andrew Balding has handled him absolutely fantastically throughout his career. The amount of injuries Whiplash Woolley has had has been well documented, he came back from a huge layoff and won earlier this season. So it would be a testament to Andrew Boarding and Blinkered first time as well. I think he, he's the one that thoroughly deserves it out of all of them. I can just see High Jinx maybe sort of ruining the party a little bit with Ryan Moore riding for James Fanshawe. Um, but I hope that's not the case because I am quite a big fan of Whiplash, really. Um, but I think we both we are all agreed that it's sort of between the English horses. Yeah. 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 Is it working? There's something that yeah. isn't. Something, yeah, we've got Adam back. Hooray! I don't know what happened then. I really don't. There was a moment where you all froze. And that's why you probably heard me go, oh, because I thought that the video was going <laughs> to came at the perfect time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one race that isn't completely between the English horses is the uh, Qatar Prix de l'Arte Triomphe, the race, the big race of tomorrow, the Group 1. Over a mile, three furlongs, 204 yards. It's very wide open. A few weeks ago, we would have probably said it's one of the best races that we've seen in history basically but a few bubbles have burst since then see the moon hasn't turned up he's been retired obviously through injury it's sort of taken a bit of a gloss off of it however it's still a very very good race and a very competitive race nonetheless i think we're all going to have contrasting opinions here very very different sort of uh, eyes into the races um callum we'll start with you your your idea of the one of the arc um i haven't really got the strongest of ideas because <laughs> like you said, it's a wide open race. I've already backed two anti posts, and both of them make it. Well, actually, I backed a, I backed a couple more, but they certainly haven't made it. Uh, Shamkala and Bowena are backed early in the season, but never mind. Uh, the other one I backed was Avenir Sertan, who is still unbeaten, and I, I don't think this filly's got anywhere near enough credit that she deserves because she's a Dian winner. She's already won, well, two classics, and was a really comfortable winner last time out where, you know, probably not the strongest of races, but she's doing little wrong in a race. She probably doesn't do the, the most in front, but she, she, I think she'll stay. She likes the ground, and I don't see why she shouldn't be shorter in this race. She's done so little wrong, and considering the, the records three-year-old fillies have in this race, I think she's got a massive chance, and she'd probably just be my preference. I've also backed the Japanese uh, three-year-old filly in Harp Star, who should be unbeaten herself. She was really unlucky when she was beaten in the Japanese Oak. She won very well over Gold Ship, the, the nutter that is Gold Ship last time out in the Sapporo Kinen, and I expect her to confirm that form. Gold Ship, meanwhile, I don't know if this is enough of a stamina test for him. Uh, but, you know, you can give so many chances to Gruda. I think probably deserves to be favourite. She was slightly in season when finishing a, a really gallant second to Tapestry at York. Before that, impressive winner of the King George and, and of the Oaks. So she's got to go in with a big chance. Ecto, I think if you're back in Ecto, you've got to hope that Greg, Gregory Benoist gives this an absolute corking ride because either this horse has to be something else or he has to get one of the greatest rides you'll ever see. He doesn't do a tap in front. Now, yeah. that is a massive, massive worry in, a, in an arc. I can see him travelling really well into the race and potentially just getting outstayed by something. Likewise with Just Away, who is the best horse in the race on figures and deserves to be. I mean, a ball-length beating of Gentle Donna in the, uh, in the Tenno show is the best form on show, and then he even Im improved that by absolutely bolting up in the Duty Free. He just looks a better horse now. And, and if he stays, then he's the one to beat. I just have major negatives about... Um, him staying. 
bar that, there's a few outsiders you can give a chance to. Trev, <laughs> I, I don't think will will win at all. So impressive last year, but she needs soft ground now. If she had soft ground, I'd give her a squeak, but she hasn't got it. I can't see her uh, landing a blow tomorrow. Of the outsiders, I would be quite keen on Rule the World if Frankie de Tori wasn't riding it. I just don't like Frankie de Tori, but he's a better horse at 12 furlongs. He was a little bit unlucky in the race last year, and it seems this has been the aim, very much more the aim than it was last year. Flint Shire gets his ground. He's got to go in with a chance. Kingston Hill, if it was softer, would have, would have uh, had a hope. Uh, the slow German horse potentially can finish 10th. <laughs> no, I, I, again, Ivanhoe is not not necess- not an outside 25 to 1 shot, so Actually, it's, a br- one shot, it's, a, it? it's a brilliant race, and uh, yeah, should be 12 to 1, yeah. Um, it's a brilliant race. I'm, I'm only going to cover um, uh, half the field. Uh, 1, 2, 3, seems we did this last year. I'm going to go for Avenir Sertan to win, Harper Star second, and Ruler of the World for third. Rule of the work, fair enough. That's an interesting one. Can I just say something? Michael Andrews has gone for the exact same one, two, three. In that order? Uh, in that order, yeah. Uh, his reasoning for rule of the world, because I kind of gave a funny look when he told me last night. He said in these words that Frankie Dittori is a man on a mission, and because there could be a lack of pace in the race, yeah, that's Dittori a has ridden handy. He's ridden two winners before in the race, which were Lamtara. And Saki, and he rode them pretty handy as well. I mean, Saki just kicked, and nobody saw where he went. And Lamtara just battled and battled all the way to the line. So, I can see the case for Rule of the World. And I think his, his win in the foy was actually a really good performance. And a brilliant ride from the front from Frankie. And I'll admit, I'm, one of it, I'm probably one of his bigger critics as well. So, the ride he gave him that day was really good. And if he does something similar tomorrow, and if there is a lack of pace, he could easily go out and make mm. the running with Ecto's pacemaker. And he could easily run into a place. Um, I actually agree with Callum. My idea of the winner is Avenir Sertan. And uh, the the joke that Luke alluded to earlier was when I did the tip star thing and I put Avenir Sertan up, I could not for the life of me say John claude Rouge without it coming out like Clondor. Uh, the, the, I think one of, the, one of them was... Uh... Claude John Rouge as well. Claude John Rouge was one. I forgot yeah. Christophe Lemaire's name in one of them. Yeah, there, there, there was about 20 outtakes, so it was, it was, it was fun to do. And uh, Luke, I think, enjoyed them. So, um, yeah, she's my it. idea of the winner. And in that uh, Tips Off video, I said that I felt she was going into the race underrated, as Callum rightly said. She's a pre Diane winner. She's a French Guineas winner as well. Um, she won really nicely at Deauville last time out as well, beating Chris all who runs in the opera earlier on. Uh, the only slight concern I've got is store one, but Zarkova won from store one, so I'm not... It's just whether they all come across, and if she's trapped on the inside, that could be my only worry about her. Uh, others, I agree with Callum on just the way. If he, if he stays, I think, he could, I think he'd be your winner, if he, can, if he stays, that is. Uh, to Gruder, I respect a lot. Ecto, I, I can't have Ecto. I just think that in an arc... For me to win the race, you have to be leading at least a furlong and a half out, a furlong out, and you're kicking clear. Ecto will not do that. You have to produce him at the last possible moment for him to win. And rarely do you get that in an arc. I mean, I know Solomir did it, but that was because off ever stopped in front. So, in fact, if Ecto <laughs> does that, <laughs> oh, do you know what? After this, I think I think we should watch that video after this video. The poor Japanese. But then, though, I think that just the way in Heart Star would be the two their gold ship. That run last time out was really confusing because he got detached early on and he lightly joined onto them and then he was staying on second. He can't do that tomorrow and he cannot give them a head start like that. Um, I think Flinch is overpriced on the ground. I think he could run a huge race and I thought his run in the foy was a promising run as well. Uh, apart from that, Prince Gibraltar would interest me. I think the big field will definitely help him, but however, he needs a good ride, and like he didn't get in the pre jockey club, which uh, Michael was not very pleased with. <laughs> um, I did, in the nicest possible way, I just think Prince Gibraltar's a bit of a boat. Yeah, and it, last time I didn't think he was exactly um, putting 100% of his effort in, but I just think no. the arc could be a type of race that he could potentially enjoy. I mean, he's visored first time, which is a positive, yeah, but... Mm. Will help. Not many more positives, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Um, exactly. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. Like, yeah. I just couldn't. I've also also got a line on Kingston Hill from the fan club. They say he he'll be the <laughs> best horse in the world when he ends the arc. 
There's two problems for Kingston Hill. Number one, he is drawn in the car park. I don't think any horse has won from stall 20. Number two, they've had no rain. I don't think Roger Ferry will be that concerned of be out there with his walking stick like he has been the last few times he's ran. But I just think he has to get across. He'll have to be. He'll have to have a ride like he was giving him a derby. But even then, I don't think he'd place. He could, but, but okay. I don't think he will. In my mind, Andrea Zaney on Kingston Hill has got two options. Okay. You suck it up and go four wide. Yeah. And which, in an arc, impossible to do unless you're an absolute superstar. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot win an arc going four wide unless you are the best horse ever. Unless you're um, Or, or, he sits in behind, tucks away, sits back at the back of the field and hopes the splits come. Mm. Even so, I don't think Kingston Hill will be good enough to really manoeuvre through. I've yeah. got quite a lot of time for Kingston Hill. I like him as a horse, but an arc, I just don't think it... Unless it came up really bottomless, which we know it's not <laughs> going to, <laughs> I Roger don't Berry's think... with a watering can. Um. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I just don't think he, he's sort of... An, he, I don't think he's an arc horse, in fairness. I think he's a, a horse for next year that may improve again. So... yeah. I think it will take a, it will take an absolute genius ride from Andrea Saini to get him home tomorrow, yeah. which isn't beyond him in fairness. I go with that. Um, I'll, I'll give one more. I'll talk about one more horse. This time, twelve months ago, me and Callum were both all over Tref for this race, and I'm just I'm just I'm really sad that she's not gone on. I mean, I think the 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 Gane was probably the the turning point for me where she was given an unnecessary hard race. And then Asuka, she didn't look right. And to finish as close as she did that day, I thought it was a testament to the horse. And then another mate, yeah, it was a prep run, but the old Trev would have just eaten them up for breakfast. And I didn't see the old Trev, and she needs off the ground as well, she's, which she's not going to get, which is, I'm not going to say shame, because the conditions, I wanted good ground for the art run, and yes, I can. So, uh, Trev's not the same horse, sadly. If she if she goes and wins tomorrow, she can prove me wrong, and I would love that, but I don't think she will. My 1-2-3 in the arc, Avenir Sertan will finish first, Flincher will be second, and I'm going to go with Harpstar to come third. So, that'd be my 1-2-3. Fair enough. I'll take it from here, then. Um, <laughs> as a lot of you know, I've been one of... Since the Oaks, really, I've been one of the biggest fans of Tegruda going. Um, you can even see me. <laughs> when she won the King George on the inside rail. Guy in a white shirt. This guy. Um, but it's, okay, you, there, there are a lot of arguments and a lot of worthwhile arguments that the uh, the uh, King George form, sorry, isn't really up to much and isn't top class. And it's probably not the strongest form on offer. However, Telescope is by no means a mug and Mukadram is by no means a mug whatsoever. Tegruda went past them like they were very average horses and was going away from them at the end. So Tegruda, for me, is a world-class filly. I don't think anyone could, could deny that. But the way she won the Oaks as well, that really signifies how good she is. She's been beaten since, obviously, in the Darley Yorkshire Oaks by Tapestry. Now, on the day, Paul Hannigan said, no excuses, she was beaten by the better filly on the day. It's since come out that John Gosden has said that she was showing signs of, of coming in season which is completely understandable because for me personally I, watching it I didn't see the same degree of whatsoever it would be a lot for the same uh, uh, sort of the same for other people that watched that race as well at the time she just didn't look the same horse wasn't striding out and to be beaten by Tapestry I, I do think it's got a chance in, it, in this race tomorrow I was disappointed by especially at, at sort of one to five so she'd be my main hope and I was stupid and didn't back her before the King George at 14 to 1, <laughs> which I was hitting myself about afterwards. Um, as for the rest, Al Kazim has to return to any kind of form. His form, since it's coming back from a failed stud career, isn't in any way good enough. So he really has to step up on that. Rule of the world, I, I liked last time. Had to lead, probably didn't, have, uh, didn't want to lead, though. It's probably not the ideal running conditions. So if he has to do that tomorrow, I think it was Adam that sort of alluded to that earlier on. If he has to do that tomorrow, I think he might struggle. Um, but then saying that, there's not much pace in the race. You know, Ecto's got a stable mate in there in the shape of Mon Viron, who will probably go off at 100 miles per hour. But then 
we've seen before that pacemakers in the arc don't work. They let them go off at a ridiculous pace. You need your jockey to actually be sensible and try and ride a proper race. But the amount of jockeys that go off at a million miles per hour, everyone says, leave them, okay, let them go. And then they do come back because they've gone off way too fast. So I'm a bit worried about pace, but... I imagine someone will take the initiative and try and take it along a decent clip because not many horses in this field will want an absolute cruel. Um, Flintshire came into this race uh, last year, well, was coming into this race last year with a, with a huge chance, didn't get here. Uh, so that was his chance gone. This year must have a bit of a chance. It's been in decent form, but we'll need to step up on that. Around 14 to 1 on all known form this season might be a little bit slim for me. Ecto is one a, a horse that I really do like. However... The pace of the race will not suit him whatsoever, unless something does go on, i.e., his stable mate, and does actually take the rest of the field with him, setting a good gallop. Because he's in in the premier, he travelled really, really strongly, as everyone saw. A lot of people said he didn't really stay that well, which I think is absolute nonsense. He just didn't do anything in front, which isn't really a good sign for an arc at all. But the way he travels, if he can get sort of into that swing of things, then Gregory Benoit will have a really sort of hard time trying to deliver into perfection with horses coming fast on his outside and trying to stay on the inside, which is obviously how arcs usually are run anyway. Um, of the rest, I can see, one last, I can see Tapestry running a big race. I was quite a big fan of her sort of all season, really. And from the sort of uh, gallops at the current they did before, she looked like a really imposing filly. And we sort of had a few debates with Callum about whether she trained on. I think she showed that she <laughs> trained on in the Irish Oaks. Oh, um, <laughs> in the, the Irish biggest, Oaks. Now, the biggest thing I've got wrong all season is tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, so called expert, Callum. How could you? <laughs> yeah, you don't know Irish form. Um, it, she ran the whole of the Irish Oaks basically with her saddle around her backside, which is an incredibly hard thing to do, especially taking into account that she got so close. So if she should have, well, she would have won that very easily had the saddle not slipped in the first furlong and Joseph O'Brien was riding with basically nothing. So that was a fantastic effort. And to beat Tegruda, obviously not 100% fully fit Tegruda, that was a, good, a big effort and showed that she's stepping forward. And Aidan O'Brien seems to be just finding out the key of how to train her. As he said earlier on in the year, in the thousand guineas, he cocked up and overtrained her, so he needs to just back off and sort of let her be her. So Tapestry, I think, has got a huge chance. My one, two, three, I'd have Tegruda to beat Tapestry. And then I'll put Ecto in third. Fair enough. Go with the market. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, the annoying thing is... I said, I said to Gruda and Ecto when everything else looked a good thing, and they're about 10 to 1 and 12 to 1. And then suddenly everything disappoints, and suddenly to Gruda and Ecto are at the top of the market, and I look like a favourite back in now. Yeah. Too far, I think I'm slightly underrating to Gruda. Uh, yeah, at 6 to 1, I think she is a huge price. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, she did run a good race still in the. Uh, in the Yorkshire Oaks, and she did have a very hard race in, in the uh, King George, so, but her, her form before, she had a lot of gears, and three-year-old fillies do so well in the race, so I, I she deserves to be favourite for me, yeah. no, so no, it's just yeah. that drawing 15 may be a negative. I mean, quite if, you're a, if you're a stats man, if you're a stats man, I've got a great stat for you. One of the last one winner was drawing the still 15. <laughs> 100% I'm just saying. Hooray. I'm just saying. <laughs> Private the Sean. We'll that ever is, that use. That. That's the only sat loop we'll ever use and we'll I... ever agree with to, until 3.20, no, 3.35 <laughs> tomorrow. And if Gruda doesn't win, then he'll be like, oh, that's the worst stat in the world. So. Perhaps that. Um, that is all the racing that we've got covered, covered tomorrow. It's a fantastic card at Longshot. We had quite a few questions in. Um, Max Banner, I want to answer your question first. Um a very in-depth question says, is Luke the one jumping up and down wearing black trousers on the King George video? <laughs> yes, Max Banner. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I am that guy. And you might have guessed that I did back to group that day. But yeah, no, that, that is me. And Jump if you, the, guy, the guy next to me in the white as well is Brian Ferris, who on Twitter is on Harbour Watch. So claim to fame right there. Um, trying to find questions. We've, got, we've had a lot of questions in tonight, so we have to thank you a lot for your participation. This could take a while. 
I've got another. It was uh, 15 from Michael as well, so. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are they already okay. at Longchamp? They all are at Longchamp, yeah. Oh, good. Right. Uh, okay. Let, let's get through these. Okay. In the Legadia, uh, in Legadia is full mass. In the arc, he's gone for Ivanhoe, which translates to I'm a ho. Um, <laughs> he's reaching badly here. Tits. That is the spirit from the foray. Mm. And the obvious one that I mentioned earlier and is my nap, Whiplash Willie. Really. Hmm. Not his strongest, I'll give him that. Yeah. <laughs> not his strongest. He's not, he won't be watching. We can say what we'll be, <laughs> he'll be watching later, though. Um, right. Question time. Um, Tony Amato has said, um, I'd appreciate the lad's views on Pale Samosa. It's <laughs> <laughs> not to very... York, poor last time out, but should win this. Um... I'm a big fan of Indian foods, and samosas are very, very good. <laughs> pale samosa, However, though. I'm going to guess that he need he means pale mimosa, and I'm also a fan of them as well, in fairness. But um, pale mimosa, I think we sort of agreed earlier on, earlier on that there's a few doubts about stamina. Obviously, the class yeah. horse in the race, but stamina would be an issue. And the next extra one is that she was actually in quarantine, ready to go to Melbourne, I and mean, then the come here at the last minute. It's like a last minute decision to come to the CAD round rather than go out to Melbourne, which is another concern I've got. So, yeah, I don't think she'll win. Could be wrong. Um, Bill Dinsdale, um, feel unlucky with your bet today. You're in the sorry club with me and Callum uh, oh. of what could have been today. <laughs> that was hard, hard. Uh, Phil says, quietly fancy Ivanhoe each way, about 33 to 1 on the PMU. Big treble on soul power, the wow signal, and El Mimosa. Any thoughts? Um, big fan oh. of soul power and the wow signal tomorrow. Pale Mimosa. That treble sounded so good, and then you said Pale Mimosa. I think swap Pale Mimosa for Malabar. You'll get a lot more value. I, yeah. I, I really do fancy Malabar tomorrow, about 7 to 1. Or the stick up in his uh, tannin. Yeah. But um, <laughs> double, double soul power on the wow signal just to sort of be safe. I think that's a very safe double tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Chris Heath, Flincher at 20s, thoughts? Yeah, I quite like Flincher at a big price. He gets his ground this year. He yes, didn't like his year. ground. Yeah. Gets his ground. We, me, me and Callum actually liked him for the King George and then he had an infection so he didn't run. <laughs> yeah. And that that So maybe potentially I, his trial run behind Rule the World was very much seen as a trial. No, Andre Farber does like uh, to to make a trial race a proper trial, so yeah, he gets his ground tomorrow. So, uh, but I think Rule of the World will be similarly well placed in the race, and uh, I do I do have him to confirm that form. Yeah, um, fair enough. Uh, Max Banner back in with sort of a proper question this time. Uh, so much to fancy tomorrow in all the races. Got to go for Tegruda because she's a favourite of mine. With you on that one, she's fantastic. Avenir Sertan has a chance. I'm happy to see Tapestry back at a mile four. That trip is far more up a street than the mile last time out. I think the mile last time out, they were just trying to support Irish Champions Day, really. And also the fact that they had quick ground as well. Because if it had yeah. rained overnight, I would have really gone against Tapestry. So, mm, like a mile though, like it yeah. was never, like no, it was never really happening for her. Um, and this is a much more realistic option and a much better race as well. Um, Tom Neal says, Olympic glory looks a big price tomorrow. Anyone else a little surprised we are isn't in the arc? We answered that we are in the arc uh, a bit earlier on. Olympic glory, I've never been a fan of Olympic glory. I don't know why. I've just never warmed him. I know you guys are different on that. Callum, you mentioned your view earlier on. If you just want to repeat that for us. Yeah, I my major worry about Olympic glory is that, and I don't see it, not many people have this opinion of him, that... I think he needs a straight mile or a straight track, and he obviously, you know, long shot over seven isn't a pretty straight track. I know it's not a significant bend, but you look at his form since his start of his two-year-old career, he has never run well round a bend, uh, and ideally wants faster ground. So, um, especially at long shot, I mean, he's been beaten, he was thrashed in the guineas, or well beaten in the Guineas. He was well behind Maxios when not picking up last year in the Mulan, and he was well, well being when probably not staying in the uh, in the deeper hand, but I, I I can't have him tomorrow to be honest. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. I, I don't think I've ever really been a massive fan of Olympic glory. Apart, apart from the QE two when you put him up. I genuinely don't remember putting him up. You need to watch that video because you were very confident on him that day, from what I remember. Yeah, you were. We were. We both were. 
Yeah, I I'm Michael Warren. Know. And I was on Dawn Approach, which, actually, there we go, it, it, get, get another reference in. Went, that day, Dawn Approach, and then I got the board. <laughs> I really don't remember putting Olympic Glory up then. Well, you should watch the video back, because you were very confident that he was going to win, and he did. Was I drinking? <laughs> you must have been. <laughs> I just like fair enough. Like I just don't remember doing it. Um, uh, Simon Mason has sent in uh, accumulators. Put a pound each way accumulator on, which is cheap and cheerful. Um, tomorrow, Soul Power, the Wow Signal, Tarfasha, and Tigruda. Not a lot wrong with that, really, is there? No, not really. Um, the one pound each way pays uh, three hundred and twenty-six pounds. So, you know, it's, it's, if that comes off, you're absolutely laughing. I think. I, I agree with all of them, actually, so <laughs> good luck with that. Um, Luca Copin, he come for the French video. <laughs> <laughs> he said... Uh, Luca. 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 Papa. <laughs> he said, uh, I haven't probably studied it, but Flincher is a very strong each way. He's on at 30 to 1, and I'd like to see to win. to win. Um, I think uh, there's a few people fancy in Flinch here today. Uh, or Including price-wise. What? Has it? Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, he's price oh, right. That's Hello. why it's a short run. Everyone's Kota coming in the Right. Mm. Movie star is also price wise, along with Lavender Lane. Uh, and obviously Ecto at 50s, and he's also put Faisalana. Oh. Ecto at 50s is a cracking shout from In Fairness. Yeah. 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 Like, he, he gets a lot of stick, but that is, <laughs> that is a, as far as arc anti post bets go, that's not bad. And he would have, um, put, and I think he would have put Altana. Hang on, in, yeah. Well, yeah, I think he would have put Altana. Up, so yeah. 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 Uh, Max Van back again. Uh, in the Abbey, Rangali, Hot Streak, and Marek for him are the three. Marek, he says, looks overpriced. I, I, I agree with that. That Marek just seems to win when not really expected. Like he's at, when he's out of four, then he really goes in and sort. Of yeah. Does he's his best form. We discussed it beforehand because we were talking about the pace before and I went, well, Marek picked up the pieces in this a year ago. Could he do the same? But the ground is a lot quicker than it was last year. So I wouldn't put you off of an each-way dabble on him, but yeah. No. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fair. I think they'd have wanted more rain, obviously, but... Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, this is really going to annoy me. Clement Eek, Eek or Eki. Clement, can you tweet us? And tell us, tell me how to say your second name. That's really going to eat away at me. So just give me any kind of definition on, on how to say your second name. That'd be much appreciated. Um, Claire says, "Hey guys, why is Tarfasha such a clear favourite? Do you see value at her odds?" Um, I think she's clear favourite because she's got the best form coming into the race, and arguably is the best horse in the race. Is yeah, that a, a fair I agree that. She deserves yeah. to be up there. Yeah, yeah, she just yeah. has to be up there. This is her trip, isn't it? And she gets her ground, but um, I, I thought four to one was hit and miss. Really, I could leave that. Yeah, it it doesn't look the strongest of races. It's not a it's not a sort of race to put everything on and go all guns blazing. But I think it's a it's a fair enough price. And he's also asked, Wow Signal or Glen Eagles? We're all with Wow Signal, aren't we? Yeah, we. I think. Go to Wow Signal. Uh, yeah. Um, now the jumps question from Tony Amato. It says, Callum, do you think Sergeant Matty is a good thing? First time out, all the fences tomorrow for Charlie. Yes. Yeah, oh, right yeah. Much. No, I, 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 I do think he'll win. I, I, I had a quick look at um, both his runners. Sergeant Matty, good hurdles for him, expecting to win. The hurdle in the first is a nutter doesn't settle at all at home, so he's got first time hood and go straight over hurdles, hopefully to meet but he's got ability. Yeah, I meant to say while we're on the topic of Charlie Longston, condolences to yourself, Callum, after Magnifica yes. today. Hey, I, I don't know what to oh. say really. It's just gut wrenching. Yeah, it's like I think everyone. I mean, watches it, that he, the horse is okay. That's yeah, the main that's, thing. The horse is fine. It's, it's not. It's not a life threatening injury at all. It's just a, a, a niggling injury, and the decision has been made that he won't. He won't be able to handle training. Um, so the only reason was was to retire really, but hopefully there's been talk about him potentially being a dressage horse, so Ooh. he's definitely got a, a, a bright future somewhere else. Yeah, no, condolences for that. I, mean, I think everyone that watches the show knows how excited you were for a novice campaign with him, but just heart bleeds for you, my friend. It really does, like genuinely. I apologise for that profusely. Um, 
Tony Niamato's come back and, and he's corrected himself on Pale Samosa. He said, I asked about the uh, 520 in the 520 Pale Samosa, so well done on that. Uh, Mark Toomey has said, he sort of agrees with me in an each way shout in the Abbey. Uh, one from one from sort of the left field, Hamza's drawn two and may get the rail. I agree with that. If Hamza can get to the front, you know, we could be looking at all Most of them want to do there. that, though. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, you'll know your fate with Hamza very early. Oh, Hamza yeah. gets to the front, you've got a chance. If not. He was given such a strange ride in the Air Gold Cup. Why did he decide to come up the centre? When he could have gone to the far rail and took that group along, he said, no, we'll go up the centre with him. Made yeah. no sense whatsoever. Um, according to Tony Amato, Hijinx is going jumping, according to the skeleton. Hijinx is going Anyone? jumping? Apparently. Okay. He'll need about four I did hear a rumour about this, actually. Who's the, who's the skeleton? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's one for the Albert Bartlett. Who knows? <laughs> well, in fairness, in fairness, with with Tony's spelling tonight, that could be Dan Skelton. So, ooh, that's an interesting. That's an interesting, <laughs> that's an interesting trainer to go to for him. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I like that. Wabia has has tweeted. I think we read it out a bit earlier on. Question for you guys: Is Kingston Hill is Kingston Hill's ledger form uh, the best in the field as he beat the world leader in his fate? Now, in fairness. Never said King's Fate was a world beater. I said that he could be the best horse in a very below a below average Saint Ledger. So I think Kingston Hill has to improve on the Saint Ledger form big time uh, to win tomorrow. And Wobbia, you're, you're an idiot. Um, and Ant Sherrett, I assume, is talking to Wobbia because he's tweeted in pretty much exactly the same question, which is cute. Um, Private Sean has then abused Wobbia, saying his banter is abysmal. And <laughs> That is, of what I can see at the moment, that is the last question. Regard, regarding hijinks, um, I've noticed he's in the sales, so potentially he could be over jumps. There you go. Yeah. Um, one last question. Annoyingly from Private Sean, how far does an Infeo win by tomorrow? Minus 15 so, lengths. And negative 15 lengths. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that is all we've got time for today on today's show. Uh, we've got naps coming up, mm. and we're going to start with Callum. So far, doesn't get me. Oh, oh Fanshawe. Uh, apparently, James Fanshawe's nickname is the Skeleton. All oh, right. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, Adam, nap. Whiplash really in the Cadran. You need a strong stayer. He's the strongest stayer. Simple. Fair enough. <laughs> no dicking about there. <laughs> um, I am with uh, the Wow Signal tomorrow. For my That's name. a decent Trixie. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. That is a decent Trixie. Yeah. Uh, the Wow Signal in the lagger there. It's rare that we'll. It's rare that we say something like that. We all basically agree on them three. So and on the other who Trixie, Michael. We'll make up a nap for him. Uh, Alan near Sertan in the arc. Yeah. There Michael, you go. Yeah. You've got them. Um, there you go. There's a lucky fifteen for you. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll try and build this up again. We'll try and do the, uh, on the other hoof Trixie, okay? Right, yeah. everyone that is watching this video have at least a pound Trixie on Soul Power, mm. the Wow Signal, and Whiplash Willy. Let's get the book again. <laughs> and then we will all enjoy in each other's wealth tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, but we've done that before and it's, it's kind of come off. Oh, don't mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> Sorry, chaps. <laughs> yeah, well done. Um, but yeah, put that Trixie on. We'll have a bit of fun with it tomorrow. We'll tweet it out and we'll have a laugh on Twitter while it's going on. And when Soul Power gets a poor ride in the first and gets stuck in traffic, then we can all be poor together. But that is all we've got time for on tonight's show. Thank you very much for joining us for our ARC special. We will be back next Friday evening about 11. Uh, 11? What? <laughs> I hope not. That is way past my time. Um, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Probably just after is what we usually do anyway. Uh, 8 next week. Yeah, next week uh, to cover the Cesarevich, which, uh, which is the big yep. next week. Uh, we hope you can join us then. But until then, goodbye. <laughs>